distinguished audience. Uh, it's really my great pleasure and honor being invited uh, to this forum, giving a short speech about Bell and Road Initiative and uh, Sri Lanka. I feel very sorry that I have to speak a foreign language, which is not the language of Sri Lanka and also not a language of China. We used to sp we used to speak Asian language when we gathered together, but since we started speaking the European language, the war and uh, fear, suspicion of each other came to our Asian land. 28 years ago, I landed at the port, which is about 10 minutes walk from here. I came here by a boat, and uh, I came here to study the greatest and the first journalist of the world, the great monk Fa Xian who was also the pioneer of the Maritime Silk Road. Fa Xian was the first student traveled abroad, and his destiny was the No Fear Village, Bihara, or the No Fear Bihara Temple. And uh, Fa Xian wrote the first journalistic book. It was titled the record of Buddhist kingdom, which he wrote great detail about uh, his wonderful experience in Sri Lanka. And he brought back the Buddhist sutra to China and uh, gave the prosperity of Chinese culture. The Chinese culture consists of three parts. Confucianism, Taoism, and Buddhism. And uh, the central part, essential part of Buddhism came to China through the great monk and the great journalist, Fa Xian. And today, since the colonization of our Asian 500 years ago, we now have the border, the artificial barrier between our Asian countries. Yesterday afternoon, I visited the Maritime Museum in Colombo, and I found out that when Asian people travel to each other, we, we went to each country as a student or as a teacher, like Fa Xian came here in the beginning of the 5th century AD. He was a student, came here to learn from the Sri Lanka people. And Ibn Batu came here, also come here to spread Islam or to do some study. But in the museum, I saw when the Portuguese came here from Goa, they came here with guns. And again, the, when the Dutch come here, they came here with guns. And then the British come here, they came here with guns. That make a big difference. In our language, or the Asian languages, that are basically Sanskrit, I know that the Chinese language, the Chinese language, very difficult for Sri Lanka people to learn. But we must remember that half of the 60,000 characters come from Sanskrit. That make Chinese people more peaceful. But the problem and the challenge, maybe the fear about China and about the China Bell and Road Initiative, is because we could not understand each other. We have to understand each other through a European language. Which language has a history of war? 
And this is the biggest challenge to all of us, to Chinese people, to Sri Lanka people. But I was only given 20 minutes. I prepared a three hour speech. That I was told you, have, you, you cannot speak more than one hour. I prepared a one, one hour speech. That I was told you cannot speak more than 40 minutes. Then I prepared a 40 minutes speech. Then this morning, an hour ago, I was told again that you cannot speak more than 20 minutes. So now 10 minutes has passed. So I only have less than 10 minutes. So I have to go, I just go through very quickly all my presentation. I'm sorry, this, I don't know what happened to this. It doesn't work, okay. Uh, this is what I'm going to get to talk to you. If you are blind here, no problem. I can talk, you hear my voice. First, I'm going to talk about Sri Lanka and the old Silk Road. And secondly, I'm going to talk about what is the new Silk Road, the Bell and Road Initiative. Then I'm going to talk about the 21st century maritime Silk Road, uh, which was proposed by Chairman Xi Jinping and uh, China's port investment. I will just briefly touch it. Then I will talk about the Sri Lanka and the new Silk Road. Finally, if we, I have time, but I, I will not have time, I'll talk about South Asia and the Banner Road Initiative. This is what I talk about. When Fa Xiang came here, uh, that's his map of his traveling. And uh, when we talk about the Maritime Silk Road, Sri Lanka has always been the most important hub. And at one table I want to mention to you, After the Opium War, that was in the mid of 19th century, the British had import of China's tea, almost 90%. But after, after the Boxing Rising in 1900, the British imports of China tea all came to none. And uh, you know what happened? The Maritime Silk Road played a very important role, and also the British Bell and the Road Initiative played a very important role. We know that the British has set up its headquarters in Calcutta to start the British style of Bell and the Road Initiative in the 18th century, and uh, the product it, trade, it traded was China tea. At that time, there were no plantation of tea in Darjeeling, in India, or in Sri Lanka. But in less than a hundred years, Sri Lanka and Darjeeling and India's tea took over China's trading position. We all know that American independent was through the Tea Party in Boston. But in the middle of 18th century, the Boston Tea Party was against China's tea. That means China tea was all over the world. Now, the Sri Lanka tea now is all over the world. And <laughs> Speaking about the Maritime Silk Road, the Chinese people never forget how the Sri Lanka government, the Sri Lanka people, gave the strongest support to China, not only economically, but also politically. Without the support, the political support and economic support of Sri Lanka, the Chinese Communist Party government, or communist political system, could not sustain today. I want to thank you for that. 
you know, China now enjoy the one of the most powerful nation today because its political system. That's what Chiang Man Xi said. China's success is for its political system, political theory, and its development, independent development road. How could that be possible? After 1949, after China Communist Party become the rule, ruler of China, the European and American government had a boycotted, had boycotted and contentment policy against China, just like the contain, their contentment against North Korea. So at the worst time, in 1952, when American invasion in North Korea and China were fighting a war in North Korea against American invader, it was Sri Lanka, which signed the, the, the only non-communist country, signed a trade agreement with China. It's called the Rubber and Rice Agreement. That, that give China a lot of strength and power that with all the non-communist country support China. The only non-communist party country support China. And when I came here 28 years ago, that was the year after 1989, when all the Western countries boycotted China economically because of 1989 Beijing Tiananmen incident. And uh, your government was the first government in the world inviting Chinese leader, government leader, to visit, to travel abroad, breaking down the blockade, the blocking of the Western countries, a new containment against China. And uh, today, when China started this Bell and Road Initiative, for business people, they were short-sighted. They were thinking about, how could I win from here? What a profit can I win from here? But Chairman Xi has a different thinking. He's talking about building a community of common fate for mankind, a common future for, ma for mankind. What does that mean? And that, is, that comes from our Asian culture. With one, the earlier speaker gave very good elaboration of Confucianism. What is Confucianism? Confucianism is about uh, the relationship between the good, re compassionate relationship between man and man, between country and pe country, between government and government. Ren, ren yi, that means a good relationship between man and man. What about Taoism? That means good re relationship between man and nature. No conflict. And what is Buddhism? Buddhism is you make peace with yourself, always seeking peace with yourself. So all these Asian values come together in one word is the community of common fate or common future for mankind. No division of a society, no division of countries, and we are one big family, or quoting Confucius' word, it's we are one family under the heaven, under the heaven. We are not divided by democracy and non-democracy. We are not divided by the West and the non-West. And some people and some Western media are dividing our Asian by the d democracy, the Asian democracy or Asian non-democracy, or communist or non-communist. That's wrong. We are just one family of human beings. And uh, that 28 years ago, I came here. I took a picture of myself. That makes a big difference today. And, uh, and uh, this is my travels. I was, a, at that time, I was a young scholar of UNESCO Silk Road Project. 
Five years ago, I took a Tsinghua University delegation uh, to visit the No Fear Temple, what you call the, the Bihara, uh, which Fa Xian studied. He studied uh, in Sri Lanka for two years. And uh, by the way, just now, uh, our host, uh, in his speech, he pronounced our, you pronounce our, my university very difficult. Uh, that, that's a problem, not your problem, that's our problem. My university name is Tsinghua, Tsinghua, Tsinghua. And uh, I have some international PhD students, many of them come from South Asia. And uh, we admitted him or her, then he started booking his or her flight to China to come to my university to study. Then the student asked me, Professor, can you tell me which city I should fly? Where is, this, where is which city our university is located? That means what? He, he was he's admitted by a university. He did not know which city our university is located. What's wrong with it? What's wrong? So my university is called Tsinghua University. It's ranked as number ninth globally. Official ranking, many ranking. And it's the best and the number one university in Asia. And better than most distinguished American university or distinguished British university. So we have very good program for South Asian student but I saw very few students coming from Sri Lanka, maybe because of the pronunciation and you don't know about a university, so you never send your kids or yourself apply for our university. Now a little bit of advertisement. I encourage you, Sri Lanka students coming to Tsinghua University to study the best university in Asia and the best university in the world. And uh, what is the new Silk Road? The Bell and the Road Silk Road. Uh, this, the map is very clear. The Bell means the, the land route. And the road means the maritime route. And uh, Chiang Mai Xi selected uh, two very interesting places to make his announcement of Bell and the Road Initiative. He announced his initiative of the economic belt of the Silk Road in the university in Kazakhstan in 2013. Then a few months later, he went to Indonesia and to announce the, his initiative of the 21st century maritime Silk Road. And the two countries are Muslim countries. That means he want to see peace, harmony between the Muslim country and the non-Muslim country in Asia. I'm writing a book. It's called. It's titled "The Great Unity of Asian Civilization," and we know that many years ago. A Western scholar wrote a book, The Clash of Civilization. I just finished the book, The Unity of Civilization. I'm talking about how the, the Buddhism, the Confucianism, and the Islam get united through Bell and the Road Initiative. That is why Chiang Mai Xi selected two Muslim Islamic countries to make his announcement of Bell and the Road Initiative. And the Chairman Xi also made a grand plan, not only about Bell and the Road Initiative. He wants to see a connectivity globally. And for the past year, he made great effort announcing a new initiative for this Bell and the Road. That is called ice, ice, you know, very cold, extremely cold Silk Road. It's going to the north, through the northern pole or Arctic region. In this way, 
not only our Asian country are united culturally, politically, economically by the Bell and the Road, but also we will be connected through this Bering Street, through, through this Arctic region road, where we will be connected to Russia closely, to Canada, to Northern Europe, and to America, and to Southern America. Actually, China is building a railway and a highway linking Northern America and Southern America in Caribbean area, in Caribbean and in Peru. And uh, okay, I skip this, uh, but just mention briefly. So, what will be the Maritime Silk Road? We read a lot about the noise coming from the media, raising a lot of fear about China's initiative of the 21st century maritime Silk Road. Some media said, oh, it's a pro, it's a, uh, it's a pro uh, linking, making China a military presence in Indian Ocean. And some people emphasize, just like the English language or the English civilization, they like war. They, they come here with their military. They regarding the Buddhist country like, or the, the Confucius country like China, they, they would also come here with guns like the Dutch, like the Portuguese, like the British. So this colonial thinking, not, it's not only Cold War thinking, this is the colonial thinking still prevail here but it also comes from the bad journalism. What is the bad journalism? The good journalism is represented by the Buddhist journalism. What is the Buddhist journalism? Buddhism, in short, briefly, just three words. What, what are the three words which can define Buddhism? Speak good words, or talk nice words, or write good words. So you never write any negative thing or talk badly about any person, any kingdom, or any king. Always. In the book written by Fa Xian, after his visit to Sri Lanka, he wrote the greatest journalist book, The Travels, The Record of the Buddhist Kingdom. Never there was a bad one bad single word in his book. But no. Our modern journalism, or Western journalism, which I call it bad journalism, they define journalism as negative coverage, writing bad things about others. If you write a good thing about other people, they say you are propagandist. Propaganda is not a good word. But in my teaching, if you send your kids to my school of journalism at Tsinghua University, I teach you good journalism. We always write good things about other people. Then we all become enlightened Buddha in this way. And uh, so, because we, are, we want to have this peaceful Indian Ocean, peaceful Pacific, peaceful Atlantic, and have good trade, peaceful trade. So China, according to the Chinese government uh, initiative, China building several ports, plan to build from east to the west along the Indian Ocean. First, uh, we have Gyopio Port, Myanmar. And uh, this Gyopio Port in Myanmar, it will, for the first time, make China's western in the land, inland province like uh, Yunnan, Sichuan, Chongqing, Hubei, Gansu, and all these provinces have a short cut to the sea, to the port. But in the past, they have to travel thousands of miles to Shanghai, to Hong Kong, to Guangzhou, to Tianjin to make trade from East China Sea to so South China Sea to so Malacca Street, then going to Africa, going to Mediterranean. But now, just 
immediately go into Indian Ocean, so Gyeopyeo. And China plan another, another port in Chittagong, in the Bay of the Bungo Bay in Bangladesh. If, if India agree for this China, India, Bangladesh, and the Myanmar corridor, then China, Yunnan, Tibet, Western Sichuan province, and the Qinghai province will all have shortcut to the Indian Ocean and a shortcut to the European country, to Africa. Would it be very good. China's backward provinces will benefit will benefit. And the, but now we have a big problem. India has, is very outspoken against against Bell and the Road Initiative. And then China had this Hanban Tota port in Sri Lanka. And then China already finished the port. It's called Garada in Pakistan and already opened to to maritime, to maritime and uh, transportation and the land transportation. With Gawada opening and going into operation, China's westernmost province and the largest the desert province on the, the Central Asia province of the Xinjiang province, for the first time, get closer to a port, a sea. And in the past, Xinjiang has to travel two weeks to Shanghai. Qin, Qinjiang good had to travel two weeks to Shanghai to, to get on board a ship. But now it just takes Xinjiang two days to reach Arabia Sea. So you see, in the mind of the Chinese government, if you think about the Chinese government itself, they are considering their people's welfare and their backward province. They want to make the progress and the prosperity of their backward province in the West. But I agree with this selfishness because they will make the poor people in western part of China get rich through a shortcut to the port. But unfortunately, some people have turned a blind eye to how these ports being beneficial to improve the life of the Chinese people in the western and inland provinces. They militarize, the media militarize this peaceful 21st century maritime Silk Road. And uh, so this, all this connectivity, and uh, what role and function Columbo port or Hambantota port play in the future? If you look at Gawada, if you look at Djibouti, and China built a railway between Djibouti and the Abyss Dababa, between Djibouti and Esobia. It's already going into operation. China also finished a network of Eastern African Railway, which is about 5,000 kilometers. And China really want to make a global connectivity. And it's really a great risk for China's investor. Hundreds of billions of US dollars going to this construction of infrastructure. That means what? That means China needs peace. Without a peace in the world, all China's investment will be gone, will never come back. So because of the Bell and the Road Initiative, because China's biggest investment in the world for the first time in the history of mankind. China is the only single country in the world want peace than any country else. Thank you for your attention.